I hope I'm wrong, but I fear that Suella Braverman, Suella Braverman, I've really forgotten how to pronounce her name now. Do I care? Not at all. I think we're only waiting until her next major accident and then she will be out. So, in one sense, I'm hoping that Suella Braverman has been appointed to attract so a probium to, as a distraction from anything else that's going on in the cabinet. Everybody needs their enemy and Suella Braverman is definitely one of those. I remember with disgust her rant in Parliament a while ago about tofu eating wokarati. I don't even know quite what that means, but I know it's aggressive and unpleasant and unnecessary. Um, and, well, you know, if, uh, if we're to take Rishi Sunak's statement yesterday seriously about integrity, professionally, professionalism and accountability, then she will be held accountable for her actions and she will come a cropper. She is bound to. I'm thinking particularly of the article the other day in the Sunday Times by Tim Shipman. And, and also today, uh, there's a tweet from Tim Shipman um, giving us more details. Suella Braverman did not mistakenly leak a meaningless document. She endlessly consulted a maverick. That maverick uh, is a man called John Hayes. And she, missed, uh, she emailed a policy document not yet agreed to her private email. Then she sent it to John Hayes and someone she thought was his wife, then lied to the Prime Minister about when it was sent. So, I mean, look, look, at, look at the details. She sent two emails. It was not an accident. To send one email is an accident. To send two is a decision. She sent two emails. Both, therefore, are a breach of the ministerial code. So, her own email, uh, the, the, the first email she sent, if she'd sent an email from her ministerial email address to her own personal email address, then there would have been a warning to stop leaks, to stop spying, to stop indiscretion, to stop stupidity. She ignored that. And then she did it again. So she then, her second, um, her second argument is this was a minor document. Well, it was actually a proposal about something not yet agreed in Cabinet. So therefore, it was not necessarily a minor document. It may have been a minor uh, issue from her point of view, but it was still something that was going to go before Cabinet. That makes it major. It was indiscreet. It was corrupt. It compromised Cabinet accountability. It was confidential. It was an issue of trust. It was not approved policy. You know, we can go on and on and on. Thirdly, she said that it was done at 4am in the morning after a long night's work. Maybe under the influence of alcohol. Maybe that would be the sort of excuse she could also use. Not true. It was actually sent at 7pm, according to Tim Shipman. It was sent at 7pm, not at 4am. And Liz Truss's aides told Tim Shipman that Braverman lied about the timing and this led to a slanging match in number 10 with Liz Truss. Gosh, I would like to have been there to see that. This, this effectively makes the sacking of Suella Braverman, Suella Braverman, the well, one of the few things of value that Liz Truss managed during her time in office, one of the few things of value. Bremen then claimed that she went straight to the cabinet secretary, that's Simon Case. Again, untrue. She only went to the cabinet secretary, she only confessed after Andrew Percy, um, whose aide was copied in, went to the chief whip, that's the lady who has just been sacked, uh, and I hope the reason for that was because uh, she was involved in a brawl in the lobby uh, on the issue of fracking the other night. Uh, though, of course, she did ask a question today. Uh, she then, uh, this was copied into the chief whip, who herself approached Simon Case, the cabinet secretary. So it was the chief whip who went to the cabinet secretary not Suella Braverman. Then Braverman said uh, that she... Well, actually, no, Braverman didn't say. She, she, she then went on uh, and she sent the email to John Hayes. Now, John Hayes is this maverick 
is this maverick whom she consults apparently about everything. And she intended also to send the email to John Hayes's wife, but instead foolishly sent it to Andrew Peirce's private aid, which is how the issue came out in the first time, in the first place. So one wonders how many other emails she has inadvertently or accidentally sent by this route to get their approval. This, this is why I think uh, possibly a deal has been done. Possibly, uh, possibly advice has been sought. And it's been agreed that Suella Braverman can keep her, can come back and do her job for the time being. Uh, because who wants it? Who wants to be the Home Secretary? I can't imagine anybody would want that job. I can well imagine that Mrs May may have been approached and turned it down. Who would want that job? I, I must say, uh, the only way to do that job is to demand... Um, a huge number of civil servants to clear the backlog. Only once that is done can this job have any sense at all. At the moment, it's about um, it's about scaling it's about scaling Everest with a toothpick. It's nonsensical as a job because there's so much work to be done from the past, and that work has been doubled and doubled and doubled by previous Home Secretaries like Mrs May. Mrs May was the one who set up the hostile environment. She did that by doubling and doubling bureaucracy to make it almost impossible to progress. So anybody who is waiting for their passport and has been waiting for their passport for two years, I don't have much optimism that they're going to get it in any time soon. Why would they? There's still a mountain, it's buried under a mountain of bureaucracy, intentionally. Intentionally, because Mrs May thought the bureaucracy solved problems. Bureaucracy doesn't. Bureaucracy pushes problems to the back of the queue. And that's why she got into trouble over her, her Brexit plans, because she thought that she could fudge them with a piece of paper. That's why the Northern Ireland Protocol remains a problem, because that's a piece of paper hanging over from the Mrs May approach. Uh, you know, clarity is the only way to solve a problem. Clarity and direct analysis. And if you don't do that, and putting in the time, putting in the work, that, of course, is why... Liz Truss could never manage anything because she didn't like putting in the work. She simply looked at summaries. So we should take heart from Rishi Sunak's promise that he will put in the hours to solve the problems. I think that was a coded message against this sort of summary obsession. No, you have to read the details. But I don't see Braverman or Braverman reading the details. Braverman or Braverman just wants to get to bed to go back to her dreams, uh, the, the boasts of dreaming about, um, uh, about putting refugees on a plane to Rwanda. I cannot think of anything nastier than to dream of such malevolence. That is the malevolence indeed, that is the malevolence, not the actual plane. It's the dreaming of inflicting pain on others, whether they deserve it or not. It's the dream of the pleasure of giving other people pain. I hope her tenure is as short as possible, and I hope she comes a cropper as quickly as possible. She had seven weeks to do it last time. I give her seven weeks again. <laughs>